Well, I'm safely back in the UK and uh, the weather's considerably better than when I left here about seven weeks ago. So, as I promised in the last video on the Meddings M4 pillar drill, I have uh, completed the pulley saga. I'm not going to do any more video footage on that. I fitted the pulley and uh, fitted it to the motor this morning. I leveled the motor up with the, with the uh, input uh, pulley to the gearbox. Um, everything's uh, adjusted, the belt's properly tensioned and uh, so I'm going to run it now and uh, let's see how it operates. First of all, a forward. And then reverse. Now you may notice there's a, a bit of run out there on this pulley, the input pulley to the gearbox. I didn't work on that at all, that's the way it came. Um, it doesn't look very good but it's functional. I think for the time being I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, I'd like to use the machine, get used to it, uh, find out what other little foibles there are with it um, and then uh, decide what I want to do next. But at least the machine is functional. At the back here the drive pulley from the motor, I'm now confident that that is properly located on the shaft with a uh, proper key mounting and uh, that's definitely secure. So I'm happy with that. That was low speed. Let's have a little look at high speed, see how it performs on high speed. A little bit noisier but not too bad. Of course that's running with the fibre gear uh, on, the, on the steel gear. It would have been interesting to see what it would be like with two metal gears. Maybe at some time I'll try that, I'll see. I did mention the possibility of trying that out at some point. But for the time being, as I mentioned before, I'm quite eager to use the machine. Let's change the angle and look at the other side um, and see what's next on this project. Well when I first saw the machine, the first issue that I noted was the star wheel was missing. I didn't think that was too big a problem. I think we can sort that out quite easily. I've got here um, just a random piece of shaft which gives us a rough idea of the length of each shaft that we might need. And I think something like that is going to be the length that we need. So this, isn't, this hasn't actually got the right thread. Uh, this is um, half inch UNC but this is actually half inch UNF. And the other end, well, that's going to have to suit the knobs which I have here. And these are actually 3 8th, uh, 3 8th UNF. I've got some bright mild steel. I've got three lengths of it. So uh, we can cut these to length and uh, go over to the lathe and uh, put some threads on each end. I'm just going to chuck this up and uh, face the end. I'll leave enough to cut uh, a thread length of three quarters of an inch. Just facing this to length now to eight inches long. That leaves three quarters of an inch on each end for the threads and an internal length of six and a half inches between the knob and the round feature on the machine. Well, having undercut at the shoulder where the thread ends so that I've got a nice run out for the, the tool, I'm just going to square up the 
cutting tool. Of course, I need two sets of gauges because um, I'm um, sometimes cutting UN uni unified threads, which are 60 degrees, so a metric. Uh, but here we're cutting uh, BSF. So BSF and Whitworth have 55 degrees included in angle, whereas the others have 60. So you need two sets of gauges, really. That's it. So I'm just going to cut a chamfer on the end as a lead in. Okay, we're ready to screw cut. So just touch on the work, set the cross slide to zero, and then work off the top slide. So when I see the thread crests getting to something like uh, they should appear, then I'll try the, the nut as our gauge. I don't have a half inch BSF die, so as you can see I'm screw cutting this. And I've just found this nut in my toolbox which, is, uh, which I'm using as a gauge. So I'm going to try and get this as close as possible like this and then I'll take the work out and just try in the in the boss on, on the machine if it fits then I can do the other two threads um, using this as a gauge uh, it is possible to pick up a thread once you've removed the work from the, the chuck which I'm just about to do uh, and I've already just done it on this work actually because when I put the nut on it rotated in the chuck so yeah it's not too difficult to pick up a thread again once you've uh, remove the work. So I'm just going to take this out and try it and see how close I am. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like I can use that nut as a thread gauge for the remaining two threads. I, I'm not bothered it doesn't go home at the moment. I think uh, there's enough um, it's close enough that uh, I can lock that up later on when I get to, when I finish wall three. So I think that's good enough. I think uh, we can use that as a standard for the other two threads. Certainly saved purchasing a die, which I probably would only use for this work. We're ready now to machine the 3 8 BSF threads on the other ends to accept the knobs. Okay, just a three thou off that, and then we'll be to point three seven five. Just coming up carefully to the shoulder now.
and then we need to undercut for to create a space for the screw cutting to come up to since it can't come up to a shoulder well I can't anyway chamfer on the end and I've already set the gear train up to cut uh, 20 TPI I don't have a screw cutting gearbox on this lathe but uh, it's surprisingly quick when you get used to it uh, it only took me what a couple of minutes just to change the gears over Just touch off on the outside so I've got a reference on the cross slide. Slow down a bit, engage the gear train, and put a small cut on. And here we go, a bit of oil. And that's just a scratch cut. Just come in for a closer shot there so we can see a bit more what's going on. You know, once you get everything set up, the screw cutting is uh, quite quick. Certainly saved a lot of money having not had to buy uh, two dies. Okay, we just try one of the knobs for size. Yeah, a little bit more, I think. Yep, I think that's what we want. So while cutting the last thread, I noticed the tool wasn't com cutting comfortably. So I just took it over to the grinding wheel, touched it up ever so lightly, and you can see now it's performing much better. I think it's almost always true to say a little bit of time spent on keeping your tool sharp usually repays itself in performance and time saved. Okay, let's have a look, see how it looks. Okay, I think I'll have to uh, tighten these up finally uh, with something a bit more substantial, maybe some mole grips or something and see if I can find some way to protect this as I tighten them up. But you can get the picture there. I'm quite happy with that and I think those proportions are probably about right. Certainly it didn't want to be any bigger than that. Could possibly be a bit smaller. These could be shorter. But I'll, I'll use the machine first and uh, see how it feels. And then if I need to adjust them, I can do that later. So they've got to be tightened home. And then the last thing is 
some of these knobs have got to be replaced. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the right threads, so I'm going to have to find a way to grip the knobs and then um, re-thread them to this size. I managed to source these with a sufficiently small diameter which can be drilled out and I can still tap it to the required 3 8 BSF. I found this old tap in my odds and end box, so nearly there. The only other challenge is how to hold this. I am reluctant to hold this in my one of my chucks because I'm afraid of um, cracking it. So I was wondering if I could make a simple wooden collet, something like this, um, out of this material maybe. So it would be square to fit my four jaw scroll chuck. Um, and I would bore it all the way through and a taper on the back there with a parallel portion so that this can come in, seat up against the back there and then this collet would be split so that when the chuck um, closes in it grips on the ball knob. And then what I can do is put something in here and line it up with the tail stock, lock it and then I'll be ready to drill and hopefully tap. So that's the plan. Let's see if we can do it. The wooden collet is now ready to accept the ball handles and what I've discovered is that there's sufficient flexibility in the wood not to uh, require a split. So I haven't split it, I've just turned it to size and you can see that the the knob just presses in. It's a good fit and maybe I'll just slacken this off slightly. And then we can sort of rotate it into position like that. And then what I'll do is I'll use this drill to line up with the center line and then we can, I think we can um, be confident that that's going to hold it so I'm just lining up with the back of the with the back of the bed in a couple of planes and then um, yep that looks square to me so I just nip it up I think that's a great way for holding something like this which you don't want to damage um, nothing much to grip on it's it's spherical and yet that um, is uh, quite secure so we can um, we can drill that out now to the tapping size and uh, tap it. Got to measure the depth of the hole. It's actually seven eighths, so I think we'll go three quarters. I think to make sure we have a good start with the tapping, I'm going to counterbore it uh, three eighths. Now I'm going to wind this in by hand because uh, I'm not absolutely confident that uh, the collet will grip the, the ball hard enough. So I'm going to wind this, wind this in by hand with a little bit of pressure from the tail stock, just feeding it in. Yep, that's, that's going fine. Well, actually I've experimented a bit and uh, by using the speed controller, and starting with a low setting and on a relatively high gear ratio so there's not too much torque going to the chuck actually it's quite sensitive and I can uh, I can tap under power so I'm doing that at the moment
Well, we'll give that a try, see how that's worked. So just releasing the pressure off the, off the collet, not entirely, just sufficient to take the pressure off the ball knob. And then see if I can get it out with the tap. That's it. Let's go and try it. Okay, it's time to fit the smaller ball knobs which we modified. Uh, one little experience I've had here which uh, I might like to pass on, which is that uh, with these smaller ones, because there's no shoulder for them to butt up against, and uh, there's a wedging action if you tighten them too much. So I'm actually gonna put these on with locking adhesive. Now that wasn't a problem with the larger ones because they had a shoulder to a butt. Um, so uh, they actually lock quite well uh, without this danger of them splitting, I hope anyway. So I'm gonna put these on with some locking adhesive and uh, that will resist the temptation to, um, to tighten them up as you're using the machine so they'll be locked in place. Okay, let's give this um, drill a test. This is a, a very small drill, so we'll run it on the higher speed and see how that works. Now we'll open that up. This is a number three drill. And we'll go to an 8.5 millimeter. And I'm gonna slow this down now. So I've just uh, gone into the lower gear range. So that was an eight and a half millimeter drill. And finally with a half inch, and I'm just gonna tighten up the clamps a little bit more. Well that concludes the five part series on the Meddings M4 pillar drill. I hope you enjoyed it.